Hi guys, this is Mam Yan. I'm a review lecturer for NLE and NCLEX. And let's learn the basics of your antihypertensive medications. To understand better yung mga antihypertensive drugs natin, guys, first we need to understand the basic concepts of your hypertension or increase in blood pressure. Now, dalawa lang talaga yan. Number one, every time there is vasoconstriction, guys, you will expect the blood pressure to increase. It's because once you have a very narrow blood vessel, the blood will therefore need to exert more effort in order to pass through a very narrow blood vessel. And number two, every time there is increase in blood volume, the blood pressure also increases. It's because when you have more blood in the blood vessel, there is also more blood pushing against the walls of the blood vessels. Ano na ba yung mga ways of the body to increase blood pressure? Number one, nandyan si RAS or si renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Whenever the kidneys receive poor circulation of blood or in the case of low blood pressure, or hypotension, the kidneys will trigger your RAS. It will release renin. And renin will convert angiotensinogen from the liver into angiotensin 1. However, angiotensin 1 is not so strong of a vasoconstrictor. So it will need the help of your lungs. The lungs will therefore release angiotensin converting enzyme or your ACE. Then, si ACE, i-convert niya si angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Now, once you have angiotensin 2, that one is a very potent vasoconstrictor. It can constrict your blood vessels. And remember what I said, every time you will have vasoconstriction, your blood pressure will increase. This is where your ACE inhibitor or your angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor medication takes effect. Our first antihypertensive drug, the one that ends in prils, captopril, lisinopril, enalapril, basically what they do is that they will stop the conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2 by inhibiting the enzyme ACE or your angiotensin converting enzyme from the lungs. So, pag wala kang angiotensin 2, dahil hindi mo na-convert ang angiotensin 1, walang vasoconstriction. Therefore, the blood pressure will not increase. One thing about your ACE inhibitor, guys, is that the most common side effect is dry cough. And most patients will really complain of persistent dry cough, which is why most patients are then switched from an ACE inhibitor into an ARBs or your angiotensin receptor blocker. Because ARBs, as compared to your ACE inhibitors, they don't cause persistent dry cough. Now, going back to your RAAS, once we already have angiotensin 2, which is a very potent vasoconstrictor, angiotensin 2 needs to go to its receptor site in order to trigger the vasoconstricting effect. Only by then, angiotensin 2 can exert its vasoconstricting effect. Pero, pag hindi siya nakapunta sa receptor site niya, guys, hindi niya kayang mag-cause ng vasoconstriction. Kaya, our second antihypertensive med comes in, and that's your ARBs or your angiotensin 2 receptor blocker. Ang ginagawa ng gamot na to is that even if you already have your angiotensin 2, it will block the receptor site of angiotensin 2 so that angiotensin 2 cannot take effect cannot make its vasoconstricting effect and will therefore cannot increase the blood pressure. So yung mga ARBs natin, yan yung mga medications that ends in sartan. Losartan, the very famous one, valsartan, and your candesartan. Now it's important to note na your ACE inhibitors and your ARBs, they both have common adverse effect and that's number one, angioedema. And angioedema, it can appear as swelling of the face, lips, tongue, and even your throat. So as a nurse, remember our priority is always ABC, airway, breathing, and circulation. And if ARBs and ACE inhibitors can cause angioedema, and once angioedema starts manifesting to the patient, we really have to report to the physician and withhold the giving of your ARBs or ACE inhibitor once angioedema is already present because it can obstruct the airway. And number two adverse effect that they both have is hyperkalemia. So pag masyadong madaming potassium sa loob ng ating system, 
it becomes life-threatening because it has the potential to cause dysrhythmias. So again, we monitor the potassium levels of the patient and as much as possible, we have to attach the patient to a cardiac monitor. So hyperkalemia can present in the cardiac monitor as your tall peaked T waves. Now, another thing that can also increase your blood pressure is the electrolyte calcium. Because calcium has the property to have an effect on your smooth muscles, including your cardiac muscles and even the muscles of your blood vessels that causes it to vasoconstrict. So again, remember, sabi ko, every time you have vasoconstriction, your blood pressure will increase. So to stop the effect of calcium in the blood vessels, we give the patients your calcium channel blockers, which is our third antihypertensive drug. These are the drugs that ends in dipines. Amlodipine, the most famous one, di ba? Nicardipine and nifedipine. So, ang ginagawa ng calcium channel blockers natin, guys, is that it will stop the electrolyte calcium from entering the specific sites of the smooth muscles of the blood vessel so that it does not cause vasoconstricting effect. Kaya nga, ang tawag sa gamot is calcium channel blockers. C for calcium, C for constriction of the blood vessels. Yung side effect naman guys, once the patient is taking calcium channel blockers, is peripheral edema. So we monitor the periphery of the patient, especially the ankle area. Now, what else can increase the blood pressure? We have your catecholamines, epinephrine, and norepinephrine, also formerly known as your adrenaline or your noradrenaline. Now, Epinephrine and norepinephrine, they are part of your fight-or-flight response or your sympathetic nervous system. So, as part of your fight-or-flight response, guys, it can in turn increase the blood pressure by vasoconstricting your blood vessels. This is where our fourth drug, beta-adrenergic blocker, takes effect. The word adrenergic refers to the adrenaline or noradrenaline effects. They end in the suffix Olol, metoprolol, atenolol, propranolol, and beta-adrenergic blockers. They block the effect of your norepinephrine and epinephrine on your blood vessels, thereby stopping vasoconstriction, thereby stopping the increase of blood pressure. And guys, it's important to note, when the patient is taking beta-adrenergic blockers or simply beta blockers, they might experience hypoglycemia unawareness. Isa yan sa side effect ng beta blocker use mo. It is when the patient is unaware na hypoglycemic na pala siya. Remember when I said epinephrine and norepinephrine is part of your fight or flight response? Isipin mo lang, kailangan ng body mo ng sugar in order to fight a particular threat or run from that particular threat or the flight response. And in order to do that, the body needs sugar because sugar is the energy of the cells. And epinephrine and norepinephrine helps build more sugar in the blood by allowing more glucose production from the liver. So pag binablock mo ang norepinephrine and epinephrine, you also block the production of more glucose from your liver. And you don't experience the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. Kasi pag mapapansin mo guys, ano-ano ba yung mga signs and symptoms ng hypoglycemia? It's actually a fight or flight response. Signs and symptoms. Tachycardia diaphoresis, cold, clammy skin, tremors. Oh. Pag binlock mo ang norepi and epinephrine, hindi mo na mararamdaman ang mga signs and symptoms ng hypoglycemia. Kaya nagkakaroon ka ng hypoglycemia and awareness. Now, going back to RAS, in the involvement of your aldosterone, the effect is reabsorption of sodium. Guys, remember, wherever aldosterone goes, salt follows. And, Wherever salt goes, water follows. So, aldosterone pulls more salt and in turn, salt pulls more water. Remember when I said, whenever there is increase in blood volume, there will be increase in blood pressure. Ito na yun. And this is exactly where your diuretics takes effect. And yes, diuretics is part of your antihypertensive regimen. Diuretics, from the word itself, it will cause more diuresis on the end of the patient or will cause more urination to reduce the blood volume, to reduce the blood pressure. So, ano na ba yung mga different types of diuretics na meron tayo? The first one is your loop diuretics, which is one of the strongest diuretic out there. Urosamide, torosamide, bumetanide, yan sila. 
they are also known to be potassium wasting, which can cause hypokalemia. So it's important to monitor the potassium levels of the patient. Now, the adverse effect of your loop diuretics is that it has the potential to cause autotoxicity. It can irritate your eighth cranial nerve, your acoustic nerve, which can cause permanent hearing loss or yung sinasabi natin na sensory neural hearing loss. So how do you monitor for signs of autotoxicity? You instruct the patient to report any signs of ringing in the ears or tinnitus. Because tinnitus is the earliest sign of the irritation of your eighth cranial nerve, which can signify the start of your autotoxicity. Then we also have your thiazide diuretics in the name chlorothiazide or hydrochlorothiazide. Yung thiazide diuretics natin, guys, it reabsorbs calcium and it increases blood sugar and blood uric acid in the body of the patient. So it's important that we monitor sugar, calcium, and blood uric acid in the patient taking thiazide diuretics. And lastly, we have your potassium sparing diuretics, which is your aldactone or spinorolactone and triamterine. Potassium sparing diuretics, they will excrete more sodium. And knowing the relationship of your sodium and potassium electrolytes, when you excrete a lot of sodium, you retain a lot of potassium. So potassium therefore increases in the body. This can cause hyperkalemia. So it's important to monitor the patient's potassium levels. That's all. Hope you learned. Bye!